What's up? Uh, today in this video, I talked my friend Kevin into letting us check out his food plots and we're going to ask him some questions on uh, some of his planting methods. Um, I don't know anybody that has better or more food plots, more deer on the food plots um, than Kevin. Maybe I don't know very many people, but uh, uh, in my book, this is the guy to ask questions to, so this is going to be super informal and I am going to fly my drone around his property and look at some of the stuff he's got and ask him questions about some food plots I want to do and some food plots that he's, he's going doing. Um, if you guys have any, this is going to be like very broad and generic, kind of trying to cover just a little bit of everything. So if you guys have any questions about um, anything you're trying to plant or anything you see in this video or anything you want covered uh, in more detail, let me know. Drop a comment below um, and we'll try to, we'll try to ask, ask Kevin those detailed questions or maybe, you know, in the near future make a more detailed video on it. So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I've... My background in food plots, uh, you guys may have seen, I do some small stuff with ATVs. Uh, I've got into it more in the past couple years, but I've been doing some type of food plots for the purpose of hunting, um, I don't know, 10 years or something. Um, and I don't know a whole lot about it still. So, Kevin, how long have you been planting food plots? Uh, I would say for probably since I was probably 20. I'm 54 now. It's so, <laughs> so a long time. But you know, mainly back then we focused on doves. But I saw the side effect of the doves was you could draw deer too. Whether I'd done sweet corn or corn or you know, sunflowers for doves, you could you there was multiple things use it. So and ironically this year and when we're going to take this video right now, you have a lot of sunflowers for doves, right? Yes. Uh, they like them early, and then I'm using basically as a screen or a block to keep the deer off my beans that I want for late season. So, um, well, plus I'm, I'm I'm sure you guys are gonna have a pretty fun dove hunt. Oh yeah, <laughs> which yeah, should have a big dove. 
I mean, got two fields, so we unfortunately, I'm gonna be in uh, me and Justin, and maybe a few others are, are planning to go down to Kentucky and start a new tradition. We're going to try to start doing early season deer hunts in Kentucky on public land. Um, that's just. Can I try? Can I go? They don't let, allow crossbows. I don't care. Why don't you guys want to come sit down here instead can, of bumping the tripod? I can use a bow. I can use my bow. Maybe. So yeah, so we're going to try to do some early season September deer hunts down there this year. I think that's going to be pretty fun on public land. That's a whole different deal. Um, but uh, yeah, back to back to the food plots. What we're going to do, we already went out and did a bunch of uh, drone shots of his food plots. So I'm going to pull these up on my phone and me and Kevin are going to look at them and talk about them a little bit. Um, if you guys go look at our Facebook page, um, we did a Facebook Live video. Um, you may have seen that already. If not, um, it's possible we talk about some stuff in there that we'll forget to talk about now. So here we have uh, the shot of the, what is it, what do you think that is about? Three quarters of an acre or is that an acre? It, it's probably right about an acre. Okay. So you've got an acre of beans right behind your house, plus you've got a couple strips. And I believe your plan is for the deer not to touch these much until, until later in the season. <laughs> Yeah, it'll probably be December, usually when they get up to these beans. Um, they'll follow the path of beans back uh, up to the house from the west to the east, and eventually end up in this plot. And you know, even if they eat them in November or whatever, that's fine because it's a place where they're going to go. When the beans, bean fields get, uh, the farmer's bean fields get eaten or chisel plowed, this is will will be where they go. And what's your what's your strategy for food plots? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Probably my main goal is keep the deer here oh, and get them to Stop. at least five years old. Your your plan is to have food on the property as much as possible to hold deer on your property. How many acres do you have? Seventy two total. So seventy two acres, which. I mean, I guess if you've got a 20 acre farm, that sounds like a lot, but really 72 acres isn't big at all. The deer typically, I have about 50 acres. The deer do not stay on my property. Deer, you know, they, they probably travel miles, right? Right. Even on yours, you, I mean, what I do you have, think? I have deer that stay here that I've had for, uh, well, I got one buck this year that I think he's six and a half or six years old. So he's stayed here his entire life. I've seen him multiple times in the he summer. Lives here. He stays here, he hangs out. I do have sanctuary. I don't have a big thing for me. I don't have dogs. Mm. That's huge for me. When I first moved here, I had a dog, and the deer would never come around the house. Um, they don't like getting barked at and chased? <laughs> barked at and chased, or, you know, whatever. He was an aggressive dog. He was a mm -hmm. bird dog. And he would chase him off. Yeah, he's, I need uh, to tell a story. Defending his property. But um, the main thing for me is get him aged and keep him safe. I have a lot. I'm hunted all the way around me. So I do have a lot of sanctuary areas that I don't go into. I don't bother. Uh, you know, I, if I do, it's midday, morning. You know, do my food plots, get out. Um, my property is probably positioned just about perfect uh, for deer hunting because of I enter from the south if there's north wind. I have good entry points. Um, the deer, really, their destination is these crop fields out here, anyways. So I'm on the path to the destination. I think when I plant food plots, I guess I, you know, I probably don't plant enough, and I'm trying to. I'm hoping that I guess I'm making kill plots because I maybe it's because I don't have the equipment um, to do so much. But I, uh, I've got smaller plots, and in my head when I'm thinking about my food plots, I guess I'm thinking more about when the when it's hunting season 
and it's it's gonna draw the deer past where I'm hunting to get to those or it's gonna give them a reason to come onto my property and what you're saying is you're planting food plots to keep and hold deer on your property all the time and live there right uh, I've had multiple bucks every buck that I've shot I have multiple years of pictures of them every every buck I've ever uh, shot here uh, I've had multiple years of experience with them I've seen them throughout the years I've seen them grow up they, they typically they'll hold up hold up in my property believe it or not because I get pressure all the way around my property when those guys start hunting early with the wrong wind it pushes all the deer onto me and they stay here so yeah so in this video uh, you're gonna see how the food the food plots he plants he keeps deer on his 70 acres and he holds them here um, year after year he was nice enough to let me take Hunter uh, out here last year late season to do a, a youth deer hunt and it's probably a lot of people watching this video are watching it because they've seen you on Facebook they've seen your your videos with all the deer out your back out your back window of your house and I think everybody assumes instantly that well you just must have this ridiculous property of you know some amazing out of this world property that they could never have and that's why you're getting all these all these deer are here just because you live in some you know holy grail of property that you have thousands of acres or next to a sanctuary or something like that that's why you know it, it might seem for other people uh, unrealistic that they could ever achieve or have the amount of deer that you've got here um, even after watching like that youth hunt video that me and Hunter were here right yeah uh, I started off there was very few deer here it was over hunted it had cattle on it uh, I hauled off 950 tons of junk is basically this is a junkyard right it was a junkyard how many years ago did um, you I bought it in 1995 so it's been 15 yeah, almost 20 years yeah I've been so you said at first there wasn't that many deer on it um, so did you start planting food plots how long have you been planting food plots on this property uh, on small scale since I bought it okay I did sunflowers for doves uh, I tried some things that didn't work and I pretty much let pheasants forever come in and do all switchgrass it didn't draw any deer I mean, I had the same amount of deer as what I had. As far as switchgrass, so bedding, basically. Bedding only, yeah. So, and then I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure you didn't go in it and disturb it then either, right? I took some of it out gradually, and I saw my deer populations going up. So, or what was here going up with food plots. So, I left some of it and kind of. Uh, you know, there's other cover that started coming up. You know, I let the trees grow. Before, with all the cattle on there, you you had nothing left but thorn trees and scrub timber. So I've let the timber expand. I've stayed out of areas. You know, I I do believe in sanctuary areas. Definitely, I definitely. Stay, you know, That's stay one thing that you and I would have the same hunting strategy on is the uh, sanctuaries, I guess. Um, we, I think Kevin and I's strategies are a little different or have been. Um, I'm more, I hunt a lot of public land and I honestly, I'm, I hunt a lot of bedding areas. Um, whereas Kevin's got, he's got a lot of these food plots going and you, I mean, you won't go near the bedding areas, right? As far as hunting goes and you let those deer feel really safe. Um, you know, it's one thing about my sanctuaries too. They will bury, if I start seeing a, a decent buck in one area on my property that's the area I'm staying out of. It, it varies. If I know he's there and he's staying there I'm staying out of it. And see that's where I think a lot of people are different or maybe less successful or people that maybe that's the, the one of the problems is I feel like if I've got uh, if I'm seeing a buck and I'm like oh yeah he's here all the time 
I'm probably, at least in the past, I'm more likely to go, okay, I'm going to get on that. I'm going to go over there and hunt it. Well, you're saying the opposite. You'll, you'll stay out of it. You'll stay as far as you can away from there because you want that deer to live there on your property. And you, um, again, it goes back to your goal, our goals, right? Right. Your goal is to have, have these deer and as many deer as you can and as, and big bucks living on your property. Right. And I literally have people that hunt right on my fence lines. So if I pressure him, he's going to get shot on the neighbors. I mean, they literally have stands touching my fence line. Now, if it, what if the buck is, even if this is a, a shooter buck that, like that, that 10 pointer or whatever last year, that if it, even if it was something that you want to kill, you still do this, you still live by that same rule for yourself. I, I pick up his pattern to the food plot and hunt in between. Uh, last year I did get a hunt because I tore my Achilles. Mm -hmm. So last year was kind of a bummer. But I learned a lot. I mean, I sit on my deck every, I actually had the surgery in September, so I couldn't walk until December. So I sit on my- I remember you hobbling around. <laughs> I sit on my deck and watch deer, you know, every day. And that's one of the reasons why I tweak my food plots and got thinking, hey, you know what, I'm gonna do a whole farm and food plots and some different things is what I saw was when they run out beans on the lane, they would cut across the field instead of following the bean paths to my backyard. So I was like, you know, maybe look, add a few more beans, uh, do some other things. Uh, the decoy beans I've done before, and that's just beans so, on the edge where they're bedding, and then put a screen in between that and where you want your hunting, uh, your late season beans. So let's go back to something you just said. You said, you used to have these food plots and the deer would, I think you said the deer would eat, let's say you had one big food plot or something in the back maybe, and the deer would, it sounded like you said maybe the deer would eat a lot of that or most of it and, or all of it, and then they would start heading out into the big open fields. Yeah. And so you didn't necessarily plant more quantity of beans or, or food plots but you, you, you stretched them out, basically. You made, you made a long, narrow food plot starting where your other food plots were at the bedding, and, and it comes all the way up to your, to your house or property. Yeah, it's just a continuous food plot. It's been video the whole time. Is it recording? Not now, this button records. Um, yeah, so, so that's what I noticed here last year was you had, you had a big, Basically, all the the food. I mean, you had what was? It? How wide is that strip of beans? It's just like I think it's like sixty foot. Sixty foot wide. Yeah. So he's got about a sixty foot wide strip of beans, and it's going. It's it's leading from the very back of his property, more or less, and all the way up front. And then he's got more food plots up front. Um, I guess I guess the whole theory there is the the deer they get used to. They get used to eating in that on that food right there, and they just they slowly start working their way closer to the house as they eat everything that was available. And maybe it's not as much of a shock to them. Whereas, like if you just planted a food plot right next to your house and nothing else in between, maybe they would feel a little more nervous about right. just one day just walking all the way up front to your house maybe right you're or, building their confidence that if nothing happens nothing hurts them nothing scares them nothing chases them off they're going to be there the next day and actually you'll see in a lot of my videos they're in my backyard during the day mm. so i mean during the day well i remember we came to hunt that one day um i mean we were out here by we got here at 12 30 in the afternoon and there was deer. There was deer out in your food plots at twelve thirty or one. Yeah, actually, actually that big buck. The bigger ten was. I think at one thirty we had walked out to the blind, and I mean we're thinking one thirty. That is, I mean we're we're getting here way early for food plots. Then you sent us the trail camera picture later. Like that buck was like twelve, like half an hour before we were there. He was there. Your theory before was the more food you had, the more it drew them to your property. So 
Uh, what made you decide to plant or leave, do some more like CRP type stuff over over here this year versus uh, versus planting more food? I, I wanted to build some bedding back, you know, since I've got my population so high. I mean, I get tons of deer. I kind of figured, well, you know, I'll get more deer to stay on here now. Do a little bit more uh, uh, native grass, a few native grass, but also it makes them have to move because when these does are out in these food pots, those bucks can't see them. They have to go out there. They will not. If they can't wind them, they physically will walk that row hmm. of beans. Well, I guess these were uh, these fields got harvested last year. Yeah, they were right? harvested. So harvested it's not corn. like it was standing corn. So yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's let's get into I guess how how you're planting some of your stuff because I think that's one area where you do some things. Um, it seems like you know what you're talking about a little bit. So let's start with beans because that's one of the most common food plot things. Um, Forage bean, I planted for years. I quit doing them. The reason I quit doing them is that I couldn't go over top of with plot topper at all. And also, I've had before where I've had a buck in front of me. You absolutely cannot shoot through forage beans. They're, the right. bean pods are small. You get a lot of undeveloped beans. Um, the leaves will stay on. Just about, if you, if you stagger your planting of your uh, ag beans, mm -hmm. you'll have leaves until the second week of October, which is our typical first frost. With forage beans, they'll stay, stay green until then. But as soon as the frost hits, they're done with them. So if you're in a warmer area, like down south, uh, I know um, forage beans are popular down there, right? Would Longer you go growing that? season, they probably develop a little bit better, but you still cannot shoot a deer in them. Because it's so thick. It's so thick, so tall. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I saw it last year when I was off with my foot surgery. I sat here and they would walk around the forage beans. Well, they were walking around them because they're just like us. They don't want to walk through a, a briar. They mm -hmm. would rather take the mowed path. So they would go around those beans instead of through them. Mm -hmm. But then if there was a doe, say, in there that was being chased by a buck, you could not shoot them. She'd get tangled in there. And, you couldn't even tell she was there. So, as far as planting them, though, um, you do the same. You do the same thing. Right? Same thing. Uh, beans, I think, optimal now. They say seven to fifteen inch rows. So what I did was I took a John Deere seven thousand, modified it, and made three fifteen inch rows, which go between the, my tractor tires perfectly. And it's kind of a system because I start with that. And then I could come back with the tractor and spray if I wanted to. Hmm. But I've also modified my golf cart with wheel spacers. So I could drive over those three rows and not run over beans. It was a cut down planter. It's modified a lot because it doesn't have the transmission on it. Instead, it's got a gear drive that's set at uh, 26,000 for corn. I don't, have to mod I don't have to change the transmission for beans. I've got bean cups, I've got uh, the corn finger meters, which I also do sunflowers with, and then I've got a low rate Milo, if I wanted to do Milo, which I have done uh, uh, daikon radish with that planter, three rows, and it actually works really well. Uh, actually about this time of year, I plant them, <coughs> and uh, they came up, worked great. Uh, Daikon kind of seemed like hit or miss. And I was like, you know, I really want to, I guess I was going for that mid season new growth for them. And they were still eating beans, so it was kind of pointless. So I just stick with beans. It's always going to be soybeans. Always going to be soybeans. Yeah, I mean, they start eating them in spring and all the way to the fall. And then actually, after they harvest beans out here, you'll see me eating the stubble. And I've seen where they'd rather have stubble than corn, you know, stalks, which, you know, they like beans. They've got a taste for beans. I think the reason most people don't plant beans would be like myself, and that's having limited equipment. 
So what about for those people like us, like I just tried this year to broadcast beans. I've got, um, and you'll have to correct me if there's a better way, but what, what I did is basically went in and sprayed with uh, glyphosate, um, Roundup or whatever to kill everything off an area um, in the, on one, one spot. And then the other spot I had was previously um, a food plot. It was like the harvest salad, so it was like wheat and things. Both spots I, I sprayed to kill everything off. And I went in and I, I used a small disc or a tiller behind my ATV, worked up the soil, and immediately broadcasted beans over top of that. And then I basically drug a wooden pallet behind the four-wheeler and tried to I feel like my my biggest failure or what I could have improved the most was if I had some type of like a pull behind harrow or something that dug down I don't I don't feel like enough of my beans got into the dirt deep enough um, now that said some, they're growing but yeah. um, so what would you say for small small guys that you know, guys that, if we don't have a planner I used to have, I used to do what, mine with a lawnmower, and the same way an ATV. You mean with uh, the you'd have a spreader pull spreader? I broadcast them. Um, I've never been big on cult packers. I've had a cult packer, never was big on it because it got big rain right after I cult packed, mm -hmm. and it was concrete. It was like concrete, so you lose beans that way too because their necks break when they're trying to pop through the ground, and that's why. Optimum is probably like a John Deere 7000 flyer. It's playing in that row. When they start coming up, the bean right beside it is helping it come up, break through the crust. Mm -hmm. It's putting it where the moisture will build. It will seal the row. I can plant pretty much dry dirt and get beans to come up. So now you skipped past my question of uh Hey, guys like me with the ATVs, if you, if you didn't have a, a planter, you know, would you consider planting something else besides beans? Do you, I, do you think? I would still plant beans. I still would. I would broadcast. I would watch the weather a lot more carefully, and try to get that three or four days of rain in a row, or three days of rain and then. Two warm days and then more rain to get them up and uh, that's get them established and get the roots established. It's going to help get soil contact and get them sprouted, get them up. Uh, and that week later rain is important because when you're broadcasting, they're not down at the optimal level for getting roots. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want them to dry out when they're. This is a good, true story because. One of my food plots, I did not get a heavy rain afterwards, and I broadcasted beans. And there's some beans, it's about a week later, and there's, I would probably say 25% of the seeds have, have, a, have a bean bean plant coming out about two inches tall. The rest, I'd say 50% of the seeds look swelled yeah. and like they're getting ready to pop, but I but the soil's been somewhat dry. Yeah, and that's what you'll have. You'll have uneven germination. So Will they have, still germinate? Yeah, if you get the rain. I mean, the if you use good seed that's coated, they've got 30 days to come up. I mean, they're not gonna rot because of, they've got tri-coat on them or, or a good uh, seed coating. Does the seed that I, does those soybeans from Real World that I used have that? Yeah, they've got, I, I believe it is tri-coat is what it's okay. called. It's, okay. I think it's, it, and it will last 30 to 30 days, I believe. Okay. It keeps them from molding, mildew. I believe there's probably a fungicide in it, but. Good. It's so consistent. switch to the planter then, as long, it doesn't even have to rain, you said, right? Right, with the planter, it's designed it does a true V, it puts a bean down in the V, and then you got basically a, uh, the cover wheels that kind of seal the top of that row of beans. And if you look at those, 
when you go behind a planter with like a John Deere with the row sealers, it puts a peak on that row. Well, that's where it's going to crack. Mm. When it gets wet and then dry, you're going to have that. It's going to crack open. The beans going to be able to come through. Okay, so I mean, basically, just with the when you're using a planter, your success rate is just much higher. Basically. Yeah. Otherwise, farmers would broadcast yeah. beans. So you'd still broadcast beans if you didn't have a planter because that's such a good food plot. You're just more at the mercy of the weather. Um, yeah, weather, how you prepare your field. I'm kind of a neat freak on fields. I don't want a single weed in it when I go to it. I mean, plug guys, oh, they won't deer like weeds. Well, if you've ever had an experience with water hemp, <laughs> you, you won't ever think that again. <laughs> There's just, you know, there, I've got water hemp here. I've had guys all deer eat water hemp. Well, I've sat there and watched them night after night and I've never seen them eat water hemp. And if that was the case, I'd do a field of water hemp and I wouldn't have anything because the deer would eat it. <laughs> and it's, it doesn't happen. The planter, um, I kind of described what I did to plant soybeans this year. Um, it, does that seem right? Like, is there anything you would have done differently? It'll, or It'll work. Um, playing them late, you're kind of gambling with broadcasting because of weather. So, so I planted my beans this year in the first week of July. So that's what he's talking about is, is you're gambling more because you might not get as much rain, right? Right. If I plant late beans, like I've got ground right now that's bare dirt, I could plant beans right now and get them to germinate. And They'll be great until October. They're only going to get this tall, but it's great green attraction. Um, I do it every year. I, you know, it's where I get a lot of my pictures from. Is I do those late beans, and I can sit up on my deck and watch them come into them. Uh, I've done it with corn. They so they're going to be green them. longer because right. you planted them late. Right. They're just not going to get as tall. They're not going to get as tall. Pods. And think about it. They're a new plant. They're more palatable. It's not like it's a bean that's been on the ground 90 days. It's going to be a fresh bean. They love that. So really, the, I mean, growth. if you can keep the deer from eating them as soon as they pop out of the ground, which has been part of my problem, um, that's going to probably be the real better, right? Come October. Well, or, it, you're only going to have a couple weeks. You don't have that many beans on. It won't put very many beans on. They're going to eat them. So, too and that's quick. why I vary my dates. I do three plans of beans. I tried to get some in the ground the first part of May, and that's my beans around my house because I know the deer aren't going to come up and eat them in the spring, and that gets them to the tall height and produce. Yeah, you know, they'll. I would say they're probably going to produce in the 70 bushel, uh, 70 bushel an acre if I had harvested them. That's where I want my beans to be at for around the house. I'm not shooting deer here. I don't care how tall they are. I want the deer here in winter. I also want deer to have something late, and I can't count on the farmer next to me not chiseling his ground. Seems like all everybody now, even where I'm at, everybody chisels or, or plows up the the or their ag fields um, right after they harvest it, right. which you know you get a lot sucks of guys, for the deer hunters. You get a lot of guys talking about no-till. I drive. 45 miles to work one way, and there was not one no-till field between here and Champaign, Illinois. I go for yield. I'm kind of like, just like a farmer, the fields around my house, I want yield. I want the most amount of beans possible, because this is where they're coming to. It's a destination. So if I no-tilled and I got 35 bushel an acre, I wouldn't be happy. Um, the weed control is getting harder. I row crop my, not between my rows, but where my tire, tire tracks are to get good clean fields. The Roundup Ready beans I plant, and I don't have a huge problem with. Yeah, because you can go, you can go back and spray, right? I can spray or I can cultivate. See, because people are all talking about weed control, and that's why they no-till. Uh, because they say, if, you know, if you till, you're going to germinate those weed seeds and then you're going to have weed competition um, coming up. Right. And what they're doing, and it's understandable, they're going for a canopy to 
can't uh, block the sunlight out from the weed seeds. So that's kind of a, a different strategy. Right. The bad thing about drilled beans is you don't have the option to come back over top like I do with a plot topper or, or whatever you want, brass, any kind of brass. You mean when you, mean when you, you have a solid when stand? When you have a solid beans. stand, it's harder yeah. to come back. So that's that's why when you see your your beans split into rows and there's bare dirt in between, right. you're coming back and you're putting brassicas mixed in with right. that. And then also the uh, the standability of beans um, when you broadcast them, and I've broadcast them hundred you know maybe not a hundred times, but a lot here before I start building my own planter. They don't stand through the winter. You know, they're so close. The broadcasted get, beans. Yeah, when you get a snow on them, they lay down. Get on the ground, <coughs> and that's when they start molding. They'll do uh, fall. It's because the beans. beans are so close to each other, right. and, and the snow can pile up on them. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. A lot of rain, because they don't have a good uh, root system. The heavy rains will fold them over. And, uh, yeah, I looked at that years ago. I was like, well, why... Why did these beans fail? I got reading on it. They say optimal row is seven to 15 inches. And that's why I went with the 15 is that put three rows between my tires, back tires and the tractor. Okay. Um, but all that said for us guys with ATVs, it's beans is still hands down the best thing. So you're gonna do what you gotta do and you're just gonna broadcast beans if that's all you have. Right, and I still would. I would broadcast beans at a heartbeat. Um, so, you know, next year I'd, I'd love to look into having a, a well, my buddy has a, a one row planter, for example, that's probably picked up pretty cheap. He can pull behind his, uh, his little tractor. Um, I think those three rows, unless you make them yourself, are going to be a little more pricey. Yeah, possibly. they really took off. When I bought my first six row John Deere, I think I paid thousand dollars for it and it was real good shape it had the road cleaners it wasn't no till but it was a conventional till but it had road, the Yetta road cleaners um, it came with all the the six rows of corn six rows of beans it had the uh, Kinsey meters for beans and uh, I used it for probably six, seven years, done sunflower with it, done beans, and decided, you know, hey, I can modify this, <clears throat> get my three rows in closer, and give me options for plot topper or brassicas, whatever. And um, it kept my deer from going from plot to plot. Because I used to do two different plots and do a plot of beans. Then over here I'd do brassica, turnips, whatever. Right. And those deer would go back and forth, the does I have, and it just gave you the opportunity to get busted by the does. Uh -huh. So my idea was do the, the long path of food plot, and they kind of migrate through it, and once the does clear, then the bucks are behind, you have less chance of getting busted. So. That's one way to do it. Um, so... We've talked about, I think you get, you're get you light years ahead of me on, I mean, you're getting into the row spacing and all, you know, it's very interesting learning all this stuff. What about um, as far as the soil prep goes? Do you do soil tests and put down fertilizer based on your soil tests and things like that? I do. Uh, I have, well, since I, my farm got farmed, uh, I always had a fertilizer company do all that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they, so they would come out and test? Right, they did and soil samples all across the farm. And I followed their rules as far as fertilization. They would come in and do the lime everywhere. It was easier because lime is hard to spread. So that was part, probably part of your cash rent. Right. And what about now? This year you're not cash renting it. I know you're already, so you're already, you were set up good last year. I'm still going to have the soil samples done by a fertilizer company. They will come in, they'll tell you what you need here, here, and here. And really, 
Um, just keep that pH right at seven mm -hmm. is probably the goal. See, my I I did test my soil pH, and it was like six seven range. Um, now this was just one, you know one of the it was like a little soil test kit, and yeah. you, you put the dirt and put water, mix it up, put the drops in it, and I know that's not super accurate. Um, I need to either hire someone or probably what I'll do is I need to get the soil samples and send them off or take them down there to Shelbyville and get them to Yeah, the extension process can do that for you. I, I used to do that. Um, it was just easier for me because I wanted the lime spread either way. Mm -hmm. Have a fertilizer company do it. What's what's uh, fertilizer, what kind of cost are we talking? Of course, you have, you're talking about quite a bit of acres. I think last year I planted uh, 17 acres of corn total here and it was probably my half because we did 50-50 cost share mm -hmm. was I think probably $1,300. So. so that's definitely going to be on the, the high end of what I think hobby food plotters are going to pay. Like I said, you're, you're at the, you know, you, you're the, you're, you're, you're definitely a hobby food plotter, but like it's like your passion passion so you know you're you're gonna pay more than I think most average of course that yeah. was during when you're getting cash rent too right. so that was part of an income so that are you still gonna pay that much you think no I, going I into other that. years okay yeah to me I, I hear the guys say buy beans from your co-op as if I'm gonna put this much time and effort into it I'm not putting co-op beans I've done it before where I've sold beans that they said they were Roundup ready, sprayed them with Roundup, and they were dead. So they, for co-op beans, I'm I'm green on this. I'm I'm assuming that's from your local, um, like here, like Col like for me it'd be Coles County. Right. You go whatever. to an elevator or wherever. Yeah, and they're gonna give you beans that are supposed to be good for your area, right? Yes. And that was one of the whatever other things. they got a good deal on. You know, thinking about about. And I will say about real world is I tried to buy other beans this year that were group five beans and I couldn't get them. And that's one of the best things about real world is they're a higher number of group beans, which means they grow longer and they're going to stay green longer. The local beans here, I think, are like maybe a 3.5 to 3.8 group. So this is something I've, I have no idea about. So, so there's like a group rating? Right. And that's how long the bean will grow before it uh, terminates or... Okay, so that's like a... I've, I've, heard of, I've heard of like 30 day or 60 day or 90 day beans or something. But it's corn. Or, I mean, or corn. Is that beans, similar? Is that kind of same the same idea? Deal? Is you have how many, so many growing days and they'll be at this point. Okay. And uh, that's the best thing about a blend is you have a variety. So you have mm -hmm. beans that will almost guarantee to put beans on and you could still yeah. have green the first two weeks of October. Yeah, so I mean, just real quick again, I, I not to make it a commercial, but I think the reason that both of us would plant real world beans, for example, or why you chose would choose them or like them um, is because they, they did find that nice little mix um they're high oil that's the other thing yeah. i believe there's four varieties and they vary i think the variety is they're high oil and they're a little longer growing season uh -huh. they picked ones that were shatter resistant the most basically the ones that held the pods on the beans the longest right um what else and they tested i think in spring or you know late 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 winter so it's not like a farm product where they they're shadow resistant and they test in september or october they were tested longer into the season um, nobody ever argues that the ag regular just if you go to your co-op and buy a bag of ag beans i've never heard anybody say that those are better right than and, real world so i'm actually, like well if i'm gonna gamble here for a few bucks more why not or, I'm saying more, is that right? It's probably a little bit more, or? 
they're gonna be a little bit more, but they put work and research into it. If I'm gonna spend two thousand dollars on a bow and arrow, <laughs> why wouldn't I spend seventy bucks on a bag of beans? Right. If I don't have the deer, what's the point in having that bow? Yeah. That's if I point. do not have deer, it's pointless to have a good bow. Yeah. And I put enough work into it that I'm gonna spend the money. Yeah. You got. You got. Was that beans too? Yeah. So you, you got beans just like all around your house there. Yeah. Those three, and then those. you get your soil right, and all your fields are already previously ag fields because you've been doing it so much. So you go in and you cultivate, right? I either uh, cultivate you, you don't do or disc. Yeah, I definitely do. You don't do no-till, and that's like you said because you want the highest yield. Right. So yes, uh, the strategy of no-till. Um, maybe you can get away with less weeds germinating and maybe the bean canopy will outgrow the weeds or they'll they'll get established before the weeds come up right and then the bean canopy will keep the weeds down so that's a fair strategy but in the end you won't get the the tonnage the amount of the yield from the the crop that you would if right. you would have uh cultivated first right if, if easier for the roots to grow is that right I hear a lot of guys hey, spray them when they're six inches tall. I don't care how tall the bean is. If I have, for example, if I have water in coming up, I'm spraying the day I see it. It's the only way you will kill water hemp with Roundup is when it's little bitty. Okay. And I actually had some out this year right here by the house that. Um, water hemp? Yeah, water hemp that was a little bitty, and I fried every bit of it by spraying it. Nice. Uh, I don't spray any more than twice a year. I use okay. the, I use the right question. rate. I read the label. Whatever label says, I don't go over that per year. There's an amount you should use per year. Um, I stick with everything that's on the label. Um, of, the, of the beans or the... The, <coughs> the Roundup or okay. whatever I'm using. Yeah. Um, this year I, I did do burn down before I worked the fields, a couple of the fields, and that's just because we had rain, I could get the field, had to work, whatever. This year I did a uh, Liberty uh, herbicide and uh, Roundup mix. Mm -hmm. Liberty will kill uh, water hemp when it's little. And then I also did some beans this year where I did uh, Spartan Charge pre-emerge, so it means I planted my beans, and then the next day I went over top of it with Spartan Charge. And, and then what, it's just a different, another type of uh, never hurt, no, herbicide. No, herbicide that keeps the seed from germinating. Huh. And it worked pretty good. I'm pretty much covered up with water hemp, or, you know, it's there, but I've got control of it. Okay. Um, I. The farm next to me had it all along the right beside me, and when they combined, they spread it everywhere. <laughs> it's a small seed; it blows, it goes everywhere, and uh, so all. So my, you're over there watching that, like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> I actually walked a lot of my neighbors' beans to get it out. I pulled it last year. You weeded your neighbors' beans yeah. so that. <laughs> I do about. 50 yards out, I was like, is just covered up and they weren't gonna do anything about it, so. So what about, okay, so you've, you planted some sweet corn and last year, was it, what's, what's your take on sweet corn for deer? Sweet corn is, to me, is an attraction. Um, I know it's probably not gonna make any corn, but they this eat the year? Whole, yeah. They eat the whole stock. They eat every bit of it. That's right, and I, I, I got some video I'll try to throw in here of your sweet corn you planted in the back and literally it looks like you someone harvested it with a combine yeah it's there's nothing left yeah uh, how tall did it get did it ever get a chance to i mean it, it looks like it might have got they start eating it from two weeks after you plant it really yeah the it uh, looks like i mean it may have gotten some height to it or, yeah it, it got probably three foot at the most so obviously they're not they never had a chance to make corn. Right. They're just eating the actual plant of the sweet corn. Right. And that, that wow. little field 
yeah, I kept it sprayed, so I kept the weeds out. I could go over top of it with oats and not do anything to it. Just go over top of the oats if I wanted, or I could go mm -hmm. over it with plot topper. Probably won't there this year because I don't want the deer there. I want them mm -hmm. another place. But it was a decoy to keep them off my beans. And there's literally beans 30 yards away from that that aren't. I mean, they've been eaten on. So you're ago. really making me think about this. The the plot that I had my beans wiped out by the deer two weeks after I planted them because they all. I mean, they came up quick. It was two weeks since I planted them, and they were beans like this with multiple leaves on them coming up because I can see them on the edges or like where I, where a bean got broadcasted off into the woods. Right. You'll have a couple bean, you know, and there's some spots where the where the beans are this tall and you look and the whole food plot's nothing but these stalks and they're thick they're everywhere they it germinated and that stuff grew great um but i'm, I'm thinking now and i did i started to make another food plot a little deeper back into the woods but i never got to it well that's the one i should do first i should next year i should go in there and i should do something even beans or i probably want don't want i'm not going to spend my money on on the good stuff back there but even you, you could do oats i built a portable system where it's a car tire rim with concrete on it with a pole up where i can move it wherever i want <laughs> i don't have set corner post i only do one strand and i'll do different things i'll either tie a walmart plastic bag on the wire so it's always mm -hmm. windy, you know, it's moving. I've done dog hair, so the dog groomer, the dog hair, <laughs> put it in the bags. It keeps them away, and I've actually what? Vid videoed a doe right up here in my yard at the electric fence, the trail camera on. They'll come to it, and she got popped on the nose. I mean, she got it big. <laughs> she was back the next, next night and knew exactly where the fence was and where to stay away from. Nice. She didn't cross the fence. And you could tell in her eyes she knew where the fence was. I actually had a coyote too on the same trail camera, which the, the coyotes would come and eat sweet corn. And it was sweet corn I had fenced it's off. And he, he knew exactly where the fence was. The coyote did. Yeah. So isn't that funny? We, uh, we're coming up with ways to, to uh, scare deer away from our food plots. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not scaring them away, I'm kind of controlling them. And because I had beans out here outside the fence, they were eating, so I'm not really scaring the deer away. I hear guys do pop bottle rockets and all that stuff. I don't want to do that. I want them to be comfortable. Well, I, was that your video? I saw there was, you had like a motion siren or something. A motion, a motion what detector. Was that? And actually, that was really cool <coughs> because I'd sit up here on my deck and watch the deer get up to it. And you're scaring one deer but the seven other are running off with it. <laughs> so, yeah, and I had, I've got videos of a buck doing it. But you're, again, I was like, you haven't gone into your, your, your sanctuaries and your bedding is so undisturbed. All you're doing is maybe you're scaring the deer back into the other mm -hmm. part of your bedding. They're not gonna leave your property and your bedding. They just, it's gonna push them to your other food plots. You're scaring them off of a certain food plot. I mean, like to use the word scared. I think I'm controlling them <laughs> from coming into an area. Okay. Scaring is, you know, I didn't mean to I'm scare coming you. out with a knife or something like that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm just making them... Scaring them as you're you're sitting in a tree stand trying to shoot them with a bow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, they're just going to another area. They literally would hit the alarm. One would run. The other seven would run. So there's a motion detector rigged up to a little <laughs> alarm. It was like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you'd scare... Or you would... Spook one, and the other seven would run with it. <laughs> so you kept them off your beans, or you, you know that was beans that year, and that was a field that was hard to get beans to grow. But Whatever they would grow. the stuff you're doing works because your food plots are awesome. Um, I've also used another one I really like doing, and I know guys use it for garden. I built a spray away, a self-contained spray away that had a pump and a container of water and a car battery it's the keep cats or what or cats or dogs uh, keep out cats of your and dogs. <laughs> rabbits out of your gardens and it works really well and 
I know I have really good video because I sit there and watch it. Somebody stole it and stole my drug cam. Oh, that my was on it. So, but it was a self-contained water tank with a uh, spray away. I think it was a have a heart spray away, but it was all self-contained. Didn't have to have a garden hose. I had to go to a higher pump. I think it was like a five gallon per minute pump. And then I adjusted this, the <laughs> pressure up on it. I took the pressure screw. There's an adjustment on it and put it like 70 pounds. So it built up 70 pounds of pressure in the tank. And when it went off, I think it was more the noise scaring them, but the same thing. The deer would trot off, you know, 70 yards. Yeah. And, you know, hey, it's not dog chasing them, it's not human. We're gonna still gonna eat here. It's just we're not gonna go in that area. Nice. He's he does nothing but play with food plots and anything to do with food plots all the time. That's all you do. That's it. That's what you do. You have a job too, but yeah, I have a job. That. <laughs> my job supports my deer. <laughs> yeah, but... What well, you're uh, like an IT guy, right? Yeah. Clover. I guess we haven't. That's one thing we haven't talked about. Now you have this little hor or I say little. It's probably an acre, isn't it? It's right, right at an acre. So he's got an acre, like a little horseshoe clover plot, right in the middle of his sanctuary bedding area. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I, I don't I, know what there is to say about about it. I did that for privacy. You know, you hear a lot of guys about screens and stuff. I was like, well, you know, I'm going to put a food plot right there <coughs> where they're safe or they feel they're safe and not mess with it. Clover was the easiest to do. I mow it once a year. Um, pretty much maintains itself. I may have to reseed it or overseed it every other year depending on the winter um, but it's a great spot to find shade too when you plant clover um, just in case anyone wants to plant clover like myself who thinks I fail at it all the time and then come to find out if I would have just left it alone from last year the spot where I was like oh my clover failed that I tried planting last year so I'm gonna spray it disc it and plant something else there the areas on the edges and the corners that I left alone and didn't spray or mess with, now they've got luscious clover and I'm kicking myself because if I would have just, if I would have left it alone, that whole acre or whatever that I, that I did last year would have been nice thick clover. Um, so now I've, I've still got some clover now on the edges. Um, but so what I did is I just, I went in and it wasn't even the optimal time at all. It was like in the fall, it was after that drought we had and finally we were gonna get some rain one evening and uh, I had killed everything. So I was putting it into bare dirt, but I just, I mean, I just broadcasted right on top of bare dirt and uh, um, I, had, I had it tilled, but we never got rain, never got rain, so I never seeded. I waited till we got rain and I just, before the rain, I just broadcasted that seed out and uh, it came up eventually, but uh... yeah, I, my favorite is frost seed March, and probably one of the better things I like to do is uh, follow harvest salad mm. with tur uh, with the uh, clover clover because the well I the harvest salad that I went that I had to get rid of it for, and put beans on this year. By the, by the time you either spray it or mow it or whatever, there's nothing, I mean, there's soil there. Right. When you it's get down there, there's hardly anything. Controlling it's, the weeds for you. Yeah. Go over top of it in March, let the harvest out, the weed or whatever's in there grow up, and then either, uh, I mow mine off, and I don't mow it real short. I mow it top, you know, let the clover not be mowed. Mow right at the top, mow off the wheat or whatever it is, whatever I, and you'll have some of the best clover there is. And you, if you, if you want to try to get rid of some of the, if you got patches of, of it where there's a lot of grass, um, I've heard you say you can spray the clethodim. Yeah. Is that how you say that? Select, post is one. Just straight grass killer. So planting sunflowers is. Was there anything special with the soil as far as uh, fertilization? Or weed killers or anything that you had to do there? Yeah, there's mistakes you can make with sunflowers. I used to put on the same fertilizer as uh, corn. I did, you know, fertilizer company. 
the only do it. They'll be 10 foot tall. The sunflowers, right? right. And they'll never, uh, they won't be ready by dove season. Really? <clears throat> yeah, I've done that before and I was like, man. Hey. For the corn, yeah. probably 200, 200. Okay, okay. So yeah, you, corn takes a lot of nitrogen. So you put basically half the amount of nitrogen right. down in the soil. Right. And like I said, I've done it before, and actually we were going to have corn on the rest of the farm ground. I picked a place for sunflowers and just, whatever they put on for corn, I used, and they were just... What about beans? What kind of, what, kind of, what, what do you usually, and again, I know it's, it all depends on your type of soil you know, and... I hear a lot of guys saying you're wasting nitrogen. If it's $10 a bag, what are you really wasting? It's something's going to evaporate. Uh, beans do produce their own nitrogen, but not until they started making nodules. Okay. So at first it could be helpful. Um, so, um, what is in the on the on the bags? Twelve, twelve, twelve. What 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 are we looking at in the order? Nit NPK. So it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and then where the other one is phosphorus. Phosphorus. Yeah. So. When you're buying, you're just putting straight nitrogen. No, I'm doing a mix. I'm okay. still okay. doing it. It's okay. just, I'm thinking I want 70 pounds on per acre, so I'm going to do four bags or whatever okay. Whatever the math equals out to. Okay. Yeah. And so again, again, uh, you just have to, you need, I need, I need to get soil tests, see what I'm working with. And then, so like for example, if I wanted to plant corn, it sounds like that takes the most fertilizer, yeah. which is gonna, they're gonna probably tell me a lot of nitrogen, which explains why when I planted corn before, was not doing much at all. Literally, it didn't get, it grew, I'd say, I mean, it probably grew seven, eight foot tall, but the, 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 the corn was real little yeah. on it. Um, it didn't take the deer any time to eat it all. It was just field corn. Um, corn also uh, needs nitrogen early. You don't want okay. to wait to put it on. Okay. I mean, it needs to be somewhat early stages. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and I, I, for my sunflowers, my thought was uh, for soy, sunflowers, a lot of times I had a hard time growing them here because of all the deer. So, my thought was I'm going to put corn fertilizer on and I'm going to outgrow them. Mm. And it works, but they just weren't ready for dove season. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, most, when you're, my neighbor has a big dove field. So he basically, when it's oh, maybe a week before dove season, he'll go in and mow half of it or paths through it or what, what do you, is that the same? I, I do a couple things. I always want bare dirt by my sunflowers, so I've left partials, uh, you know, sprayed, I kept it sprayed or kept it mowed, so they had access to dust, and that, that is a big part of dove hunting, I, you know, with, uh, <clears throat> you either want to use wide rows or uh, leave dirt like I do, and then I'll, I'll mow them off, you know, a week or two before season. I'm already starting to see doves come around the house, so that's a good sign, they'll start to congregate. I've got a neighbor down the road, straight down the road, like a couple miles, got a wheat field. Mm. So there, are, I went down by there the other day and they've harvested the wheat. There's probably hundred doves there. Wow. So uh, next year my plan is a lot of my sunflowers will be wheat fields. Mm. So I'll have wheat and some. How many acres of sunflowers do you have? I'm going to make a guess since I had the drone in the air. Of course, I wasn't measuring anything. Um, let's go with, I mean, you've got to you've got to have five or six acres in sunflowers. I think it's right at seven. Seven, seven acres. Eight. Seven acres of sunflowers. If my planter was right, I went off the planter. I do want to yeah. say about the sunflowers. Yeah. I did some high dollar seed. And then I did basically a bag of Walmart sunflowers. Okay. And, you know, just sunflowers out of a bag. And they grew, but they're very inconsistent. And there's also some, what I believe are the wild variety of sunflower, which are very hard to control in them. 
So, and that's why the backfield is so consistent. What brand, what brand did you uh, buy? The backfield, the backfield. is Clearfield. Clearfield. And then Clearfield also give you an option where if you have weeds come on, you could spray it with uh, Beyond herbicide. And it's it's not cheap, but I want to have, wanted to have that option in case I had a really bad year, weed year. And uh, the back, uh, back ones are really clean. I didn't cultivate them or do anything. I just used Spartan Charge, pre-merge, and uh, I sprayed them, I think, once, Grass Killer, the hmm. Select. And they're really clean. The front ones, I wanted to try a different thing. I use Spartan Charge, and then later row crop cultivate them. And there's a lot of weeds coming on where I row crop cultivated. Really? So I, I don't think next year I will row crop cultivate. I'm just gonna, and I'm actually gonna change chemicals too. Instead of Spartan Charge, I'm gonna use Authority, and uh, that will be pre-plant. And that will be for my beans and everything. And it will help me fight the water hemp, some of the other weeds. So moral of the story, if you guys have a question about fertilizers, about herb herbicides, uh, any kind of food plotting, hobby farming questions, um, leave a comment on this, uh, on this video and uh, we'll, get, we'll get Kevin to get you, get you an answer. Um, He's got a lot of, a lot of knowledge and experience on that. Um, so we've raved about, talked a lot about beans and uh, corn, clover. One thing we talked about planting the the harvest salad, basically oats. The thing we've talked about planting green things in the beans. Um, I know we talked about it a lot on the Facebook Live. Don't know how much we talked about it in this, but basically you're coming back and the reason you're spacing out your beans is so that you can come back in, in August and plant oats, uh, wheat, peas, turnips, radishes, and any of that green stuff um, in, in with the beans. Um, I think we did talk about that a little bit. Right. You're planting that in September. Right. First, last week, August, first week, September. Yeah, and I'll even consider if I'm getting rain the last week of August, that's what I'm going to do. If I know there's going to be rain, so I guess why? I guess I guess why? Why is it that you plant later? Is it just you're trying to time it with the cool weather, and you don't want like birds to eat the seed before it germinates? Well, Does that's that one of the good things about my rows of beans. The birds won't eat any. Of okay, them. they're covered up. But palatability, I think, is probably the biggest reason. I used to plant turnips. So it's nice and fresh when it comes right. out during hunting season. Right. I think there's a couple of different thoughts on it. And like I said before, if you plant a turnip and the old wives' tale was uh, 25th of July, wet or dry, and you get giant balls. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that's great for late winter because they'll eat them. But for hunting season, probably September. And, and there's... It depends on the mix too. So the green is more palatable. Right. They can eat it. They like right. eating it better. Right. And there's different blends. So, but for the one I use, September first is probably ideal. Uh, I know there's some of those blends that have um, alpha alpha and stuff like that. And probably August is probably their date. The thing that I can go on and on about is I I have planted. Um, oats, peas, and wheat blend, the uh, uh, harvest salad. <clears throat> this is probably maybe my fourth or fifth year planting it, and I tried planting lots of other mixes with, like, I've done, it's not like I've just used that, you know, I've planted a lot of green. Right. I have not planted soybeans, I don't have much experience. Soybeans and corn, things like that, I don't have the experience with, so that's why I'm glad to learn from you. Um, but I have planted a lot of the, the green green food plots, you know, anywhere from half acre to three quarter acre plots. I've done that's what I've done a lot of and planting with ATV stuff and, and broadcasting it. Um, and I've planted a lot of stuff like second week of August, and the deer have 
I mean, by the time, like you said, I mean, it does, it starts growing. I'm about two weeks later, I've got, you know, two or three inch growth if it rains. So it does start growing right away. And I guess then by the time October rolls around, it's like, it's pretty thick and full. So I can see, I can see where, you know, they would like eating it when it's first fresh and, and coming up and maybe, maybe they would desire that over someone else's plot or another grass somewhere else that's more mature. Um, but I, but I have had really good success. It seems like with those, um, especially this, that harvest salad stuff, when it, when you get enough rain and it gets established, um, and just really all throughout the whole season, it's, they'll, I mean, they, they'll hammer that. I think I had pictures of deer in this one harvest salad plot every day even through gun seasons where on my property I see a lot of deer during the daytime until gun season. Gun season is when cuz I don't have the neighbors don't 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 hunt much before that. And then during after during gun season there's people that hunt all around me and I don't see after gun season the deer turn completely nocturnal in my area almost they're almost just done throughout the whole season and I think because it it chases them off they must go find someone that has some awesome food plots right and that's where I've been lacking my winter I think my my harvest salad they'll they'll still come back at night and hit it definitely all throughout until January but I don't think there's enough of it there and it doesn't interest them enough to come back and live there the whole time where it's going it's like sitting there shaking because you're touching it. I want Hello. Hey. Hope, I'm about to do it. Hope you can play on this for a little bit. You can take turns. Hunter, you go to the kitchen table. Go to the kitchen table and Here, do it. Here, I'll, I'll help her. Okay. I'll help Don't her. fight over.